you know, it's really not left versus right or liberal versus conservative. It's right versus wrong. War is wrong. Torture is wrong. Pollution is wrong. You know, it's a universal maxim across the board, and all tribes know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are we are here in standing in, in solidarity with Standing Rock. People say, "Oh, I want to go to North Dakota." Well, you're here. Here, the Tom Tom. Uh, uh, compose yourself and be in dignity and peace, and you will be in solidarity with these people that are standing the ground as water protectors. So. She wants um, to switch, switch oh, that mic there. Oh, you want me to put this mic here? Okay, I'm sorry to yak on. So let's move on to another topic. Uh, Conan? Conan, yeah. Your, uh, how about your um, your present activity? What's going on in your life nowadays? Well, I uh, my employment involves um, managing the local movie theater. Oh, wonderful. So I'm a projectionist and uh, vacuum the floors and make sure the bathrooms are clean. That kind of thing. So that's, what, that's what management means. What about running means. the cashier and the tickets? Well, of course. Yeah, you have to do it all. You oh, know? my goodness. You know, what and, about and selecting the films? I, have a, I, I, I get to put my opinions about what we should do. Um, and on occasion, I, I get my way. But so, it's really, you know, that's an interesting thing because it's all corporate. Mm -hmm. Now, even though we're an art uh, Upstate Films has been in the Hudson Valley 45 years, and they, they took over the Woodstock venue here f six years ago, and I came with the equipment because I was working for the previous uh, 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 owners. And um, so, so. But as a projectionist, you, it's all new digital. Uh, I had to make the changeover. I, I have I have a skill set that I'll never use again. <laughs> We're working with 35 millimeter, and you know this was kind of you know this is a nice uh, kind of an upbeat thing to share because I love I love machinery. I, you know I used to be anti technology. I used to be anti human. I thought that the problems of the earth could be solved by just you know eliminating humans. But really, uh, I've come a, a, a really had a real big turnaround in the last 20 years, and I now I. Love love humanity. I think humans are amazing. We are amazing, wonderful, amazing creatures, and that it's all bad programming that keeps us uh, believing that there is an us and a them. Yeah, yeah, uh, the have a, versus a, the have not, the multi-billionaires, yeah, so the but, inhumane but quality, our, of, you know, it's you not know, correct. Our, our capability and our gifts and our magic and our uh, sense of justice as, as a species can and will and really must take on the challenge of the criminality that we are faced with, whether it is uh, a small level or the high level. We have yeah. to clean. We have to clean our social house, our our social civilization. Well, it's out of control greed that has given yeah. a free reign. And uh, besides, uh, as we were talking about earlier, the Satanism and this uh, out of control egomania on behalf of the authority. Yeah that think they have the right to just uh, treat us like worker slaves in perpetual debt, and they make off like bandits. Now, now the other uh, activity that I'm involved with now, uh, besides my music, you know, I actually I have a TV show here on Wednesdays from 7 to 8, and I frequently will play guitar myself and then have a guest, and maybe they'll play music, or I'll have somebody just come in and we'll just talk about stuff like this. Uh, that's another activity, but uh, the, the, uh, an unexpected and unwanted activity was getting involved with law because my mate and partner uh, has been accused by a former friend and employer of hers and of mine, a friend of mine, I never worked for the lady, of theft. And she made it a, a felony charge. So now uh, my, my girlfriend is looking <laughs> at deportation because she's a UK citizen. Oh, no. Uh, and, and for the last 13 months, I've spent probably 500 hours studying law and battling the local machine right up to the federal judge. Wow. The fe now, the well, federal good judge, for you because jurisprudence means we have justice, and justice in this country, supposedly, land of free, home of the brave, is that we have a legal say, and we're not just saying well, yes to the dictator and is, the police. Well, this is one of the things that I learned is it's, it's most of us in the citizenry are under what they call latches. It's like latches and locks. And what that means is that if you don't know the law, you're screwed because you, can't, you cannot defend yourself. So if you hire a lawyer, you're incompetent 
So you still can't defend yourself because you have now put your authority into the hands of somebody who is not liable for anything because he's a lawyer. Yeah, and he's win in a or club. lose, he's going to get his money. Win or lose, and then you <laughs> you get you get sent off to the jailhouse, and your your house is you know dissolved, and your finances are ruined. And this is yeah, one of the, yeah. And it's a program. You know what? If you steal one purse, you go to Rikers Island. You steal a million purses, you go golfing. This is a corrupt system, unfortunately, that caters to the richy rich, and it's. I think it's totally immoral to be a, a How, multi-billionaire. Yeah. I mean, money's meant to be a commodity; they're meant to circulate, not be hoarded like job of the hut, more and, and more and more. Yeah, and one of the things that I learned is that with enough due diligence and enough effort, because you, you have to work, you have, really have to work it. You have to learn the law and how it, it, it applies. And in order to uh, battle, be, when you're embattled with fraud, you have to be able to identify the fraud and then identify the fraud to the players. And that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing. I've been, I have been uh, you know, informing the district attorney and the, all the judges involved right. and the liars invo lawyers Good involved and uh, the inspector general that, that you know, there is fraud going on here, that, that you know, our home was robbed by the person accusing it. Literally, she was. She robbed yeah. our home. The, 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 day after, the day after she uh, uh, made a sworn statement to the state police, this woman came and robbed our home. Oh, my God. Against goodness. the wishes of the state police. But the state police uh, went, went forward with the case against us anyway. Now, now, what they weren't counting on is that I have actually a long history in Woodstock, and a lot of people know me. And, and Laura's seven years here has been with impeccable uh, people, you know, for her employers, are high level people. But and, they're um, corrupt and they're serving a corrupt system. So, and oh, that's, mom, son, you know, they're going to go to sleep with all your expertise. Well, no, no, you can't go to sleep because they, they, they have what they call procedure. And those procedures is, is it's a puppy mill of law. They, they trundle you in, they make you say uh, guilty, not guilty, and as soon as you say nil, guilty or not guilty, they got you because you've, you've consented to their jurisdiction or authority. So the first thing I learned that, that unfortunately my partner didn't have the strength to do because she was in fear, because they make you afraid. Oh, yeah. The first thing I learned is that you don't give them consent. And as soon as you don't give them consent, then they have to work even harder to get you involved with their uh, uh, smoke and mirrors and their charade. Right. Um, because they, they, when, when, when procedures follow the spirit and letter of the law and they work properly, justice is done. But when the procedures... Is, is it really? Is any of your pay, pay, pay well, and it goes away? But when you... They cater to money, don't they? Well, they do, but, you, but the thing is, is they can't just cater to money when you know the applicable law to foil them with, you see. Mm -hmm. And no one does. In fact, most lawyers don't. <laughs> That's one of the things I've learned in this excursion is that, that, that unless you do the work yourself, you're the one who knows your case best. The lawyers aren't listening to you because they have other cases that they're engaged with. And so you're, you're talking away and they're thinking about something else. Um, they don't want to do the research into the nuances of what laws were broken and what, viol what, what um, procedures were violated and so on and what rights. They, they, don't, they have a set pattern because they are running people through the courts every day. Right. And we're, ta we're talking something, the statistics, the statistics run something like 95 or 7 percent of all of the people in, in prison with convictions did so with consent. My God. They you agreed know what's to it. so awful, too, is that we have um, DNA testing nowadays, which is amazing. Hilary Swank did a wonderful film, Exonerated, and at the end of this credit roll, I was brokenhearted to see that only 250 people have been liberated from death row thanks to DNA testing. Now, my God, we got about over two million people in jail, and, and so many uh, people well, that are unfairly you know, accused. It, but as it turns out, the DEA or, or the drugs or the cops or the judge don't want to be implicated in a cold case or, or be caught off with their pants down. Well, that's the other thing I learned. And they want them to rot in jail and, and, and turn their back on this amazing evolution of, of truth and justice that now, unlike when I was a kid, we have proof. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. His blood test and DNA. We could release hundreds of thousands of people from if we really investigated and used this technology properly. 
Yes. But we have private jails and they make money. And thank you. That's another thank you to Clinton that privatized the jails. I think it's criminal. How dare are well? Our, it is. Our, it is criminal because and first I, of all, jails should be like gardens and rehab centers and teaching and and yeah. learn people how to integrate back into society if they lost their mind or control or they've been violent or vulgar or evil. Okay, you know we'll, we'll forgive you. Uh, but this uh, three strikes you out and use it as a commodity, making money, even yeah, trading on yeah, the stock yeah, market yeah. is just. Just ludicrous and, and it is, stupid. It's actually evil. in it is in our constitution that there shall be no cruel and unusual punishment either. Well, God right? bless but our you have, constitution, but what we got are these wolves guarding the hen house and mm -hmm. weirdos that are now, Satanists like what we got going on, unfortunately. Right. We're in a dark time. You, you, you know Michael Moore. Yeah, God right? bless him. He's and a he, good, smart little and he, filmmaker. And, and he did a film called Who to Invade Next. <laughs> now we, we plus showed Fahrenheit and all we, kinds of yeah, wonderful movies. Yeah, so so uh, I I screened uh, Who to Invade Next at Upstate Films Theater here on Tinker Street, and I watched it with great interest a couple of times. And one of the things that was amazing was uh, Norway and their their um, correction system is state run, and they, uh, they, they don't uh, have the death penalty, and their whole and they system... they don't torture or waterboard, or even consider it. That's inhumane, only status like that. Like Mr. Cheney and Mr. Rumsfeld, who advocated it, and therefore they spit on the graves of my dad, who was a World War II veteran that stood up for, you know, truth and, and freedom and justice for all. America believed in something, and it was something like, we don't torture, you know, so Obama is going to have to join Idi Amin because he signed the NDAA, which is the National Defense Authorization Act that takes the Patriot Act onto steroids and even makes it worse. Yes. And it's ridiculous and embarrassing worldwide that we should have what is called legislation. Now, Okay, they shredded the Bill of Rights with, two, with 2001, the 9-11 tragedy, which is obviously an in-house job. And all the knuckleheads, instead of being demoted or arrested, get a par golden parachute and promoted. The greatest breakdown of security in American history. And then what happens? Uh, the Patriot Act. So uh, was it some towel-headed Arabians that actually shredded our Bill of Rights? No. It was those... Neo-fascist, neocon cabal in the Washington D.C. circuit that are really anxious to create a police state and get lots of money from the 9/11 tragedy. How could the Pentagon be attacked? Excuse me. Hmm. Mr. Cheney was at the bunker uh, uh, making sure that everything uh, in the war games. You know, the Air Force follows you know, a, you know, the protocol uh, uh, top down, so the Air Force was confused that day. Those the war games. What's going on? Hello. So no, it's pretty no, no. obvious. It's obvious to you and me and anyone who can think. One Excuse the, me. This one, is ridiculous. This is a crime. One of, one of the interesting things about the Pentagon that the wall that was breached and with the the bunker busting missile that went in there. <laughs> there was there there was no plane. There's there's a couple of great sites. One is the the amazing Pentalon where there's not a not a shred of, of burn mark or or yeah. luggage or bodies or anything. It's there was nothing. Uh, the Pentagon. Sorry to bring the subject yeah, up, but I'm not going to forget that, about the fire department. Says never forget. I say never forget the pet goat. And that's a painting I made, and it's on display at the Theater for New City. Yep. During January and February, I got a lot of art there in the hub, culture hall of the village in New York City. And I'm Frank Craven com with What's Ailing Hill in America. And again with Conan. George Conan. George Conan. And your theater is where? Upstate Films, uh, Woodstock, right here on the Oh, wonderful. Street. We're in Woodstock, and we're live, I believe, happening, yeah, having a great conversation. We're going out and this gentleman is one of the few critical thinkers who's interested in, in bringing about what's right versus what's wrong. And I'm not afraid to speak up about what's wrong. I never have been because I, my mama was working for Robert Kennedy and he got shot. The same year that Martin Luther King got shot. That's I was right. just a little boy. But she didn't want her son going to Vietnam, getting drafted. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I grew up in Spain where I saw Franco and fascism firsthand and people getting beaten up by police or just for speaking Catalan or whatever. You didn't, you couldn't look cross-eyed at the Guardia Civil and they take you away. 
And that creepy thing of fascism, George Orwell wrote about it, 1984, Animal Farm, well, it's come to pass. The creeping hand of fascism is, is, you know, welcome to the Fourth Reich, folks. I know it's a scary thought, but Annie Jacobson wrote the book Operation Paperclip that talks about bringing in the, the Nazi scientists after World War II, which is the think tank. And if you doubt that, May 5th, 1985, Ronald Reagan places a wreath at Bitburg Cemetery, the Nazi graves, as a standing U.S. president. Oh, and Helmut Schultz was his secretary of state and Kasper Weinberger, the secretary of defense at Werner von Brunn, well, ended up that, the that, rocket science at right. NASA. That's right. And it's like this Nazi agenda, you know, in the New World Order, uh, 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 Mr. Bush, uh, Herbert Walker Bush's um, State of the Union address on September 11th, 1991, talked about in the world, it was a translation of Hitler's speech of a global M dominant empire. And of course, Gorbachev wanted to have glass nose, freedom, transparency, community. And the breakdown of the Soviet Union was a great opportunity to say, let's work together with Nazis. Reagan said, no, Star Wars, uh, we're the empire. We're going to, you know, and get plunges into debt with Reaganomics and give into the military as the muscle that could, you know, might is right. But that real politic is gonna is fading fast, thanks to the kids on their iPhone, you and me, people that understand the indigenous, the native, the first people's mm -hmm. way, and the sacred way of God Almighty. Yeah. The creator understands how to have a win-win situation, a loving light, and we are, of course, the miracles. We're the law of attraction, we're natural law, and all this corporate law is just gonna be a dark chapter of history and I'm glad you're studying law and we have to navigate these rough waters, but they're really ridiculous and they're gonna sabotage themselves as unfortunately the military is suiciding themselves every day and the whole system is crumbling because empire is not being sustainable and me versus you is not a reality, it's an fantasy, it's an illusion. Well, civilization- If we work together, yeah. then we proceed together. But if yeah. I'm gonna beat you up, you're gonna beat me up, we're gonna be two little lumpy cadavers on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And our, our civilization is, is, is crumbling by design. No, Mother Earth, you will survive. Thank you, water protectors. Thank you, yeah. Seneca Nation. Thank you, all the great people who have learned how to survive, and our mothers, and our ladies and people that understand consciousness. And you watching the show, man, you guys are smart. You are critical thinkers to watching non-commercial TV, because the media spins you into buying cars you can't afford. <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah. um, what else would you like to say? You've been very uh, vociferous and full of information. Thank uh, you. Well, I'd just like to, to say that, um, you know, being that we're, we're uh, at that uh, Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, longest night of the year, period um shortest that we're, we're coming back thank you you know yeah. it's the holiest day of the year the equinox the winter solstice yeah yeah that's why they built the pyramids and stonehenge because we celebrated the return of the sun yeah so, so it's wonderful that we're in winter we welcome winter thank you so my my thought today you know my little facebook post to all my friends and followers there is it was was real uh something i often say at this time of year which is is that you know, uh, I don't consider, I don't celebrate any holidays. I don't celebrate any holidays because every day that we get folks that we don't have thermal nuclear war, that we don't have a, a systemic breakdown, civilization failure or pandemics of, of uh, unprecedented sizes is a, is a holy day. Every day we get is a holy day. Every raindrop is holy. Every sun ray is holy. And, and I can't differentiate one day from another. So my, my constant message is, is that in this day and age, I don't care what culture you're from and what country you're from, we have the access, the technology to share knowledge. And if we don't know the difference, if an individual doesn't know the difference between right and wrong, you're a, defense, you're a defective being. 
Daho mitukoyayasin. Hail to our, our Creator and all our relations. And this is the first people's perspective, folks. Every day is a sacred day. The sun rises. Actually, the earth spins and we are alive. And we are able to enjoy this amazing thing called life on earth. And if we walk without pain and we're able to go forward and smile and share our love with someone, then this is a blessing. And every moment is sacred and beautiful from the Creator's eyes. You know, you people are Christians or, or, or Muslims or Jews, you, you salute, fine, Jesus, Muhammad, and Moses as great teachers. Well, these enlightened individuals, or Buddha, or whoever, Krishna, Hare Krishna, it's good. But these creatures and master teachers who were long ago yesteryear were coming into a balancing, loving act of grace sharing the beauty of light and being in light. And it's up to us, if we're going to follow a faith, to not just go once a week and say hallelujah, but every day say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to share the goodness versus the badness. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And if you people like to curse God more than bless God and, and, and get angry or, or just complain versus being grateful for the fact that they're... They're not in pain, or if they are, they're stressed out about money. Well, hey, no one has enough money, sex or attention or love, and we all we want more and more and more. Well, wait a second. Learn to balance it out yeah. and just be grateful, and you'll feel a lot healthier and relieved from all that stress you put on yourself because you're, like, stressed out. God, I've been listening right now. i got to drink. Yeah. i got to go through my changes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Oh, I don't know. I just want one. I need one. <laughs> Let's laugh at ourselves. We need a good sense of humor, man, because what do we got? We got all of eternity ahead of us as spiritual beings. You know, if you believe in eternity, then what is eternity? What is God doing? He's twiddling his thumbs this way or that way. You know, we're, we're fooling ourselves, you know. We're yin and yang, we're negative or positive, we're male, female. It's either existence or non-existence. So to have a good drum, as you know, as a film person, and a, you've seen many, we gotta have a plot line. So we're all heroes of our own movie. And I'm, I'm the protagonist of my film, he's the protagonist of his film, and when we kick back and sit around the campfire, we're gonna have lots of stories to tell about, oh, when Aunt Millie spanked me because I stole a cookie, or I went here and there and I had a little adventure and I went hitchhiking once, oh yeah, what'd you do? It's a step out, be, be adventurous, and don't worry, just respect your fellow man and nature all around you that's living and breathing also. Because when you think about it, Creator created everything, right? Yeah. So everything has life and must be respected. From the tiniest little bug to the great condor or eagle or, or some gorilla or elephant or mammoth animal that comes our way, that everything deserves respect. And that's why the native people call their kids after uh, animals. So they regard them as totems and medicines and the four leggings are, are highly regarded as wonderful creatures that do have tremendous intuition and connection to the universe and God Almighty. And they know, like like when Thailand had the, the tsunami, they, the masters couldn't whip their elephants down to shore and do the regular job. The elephants went to high ground. the other way. They yes. just, the, Mount the, St. Helens. The instinctive energy of, of, of the creatures are blessings. And we should look at our little donkey or horse with new eyes because they look at us with very wise eyes and they can feel our energy like a dog can tell if you're a robber or a neighbor and then they, uh, they, they sniff you out you know, yeah, and yeah. things like that. So you, know, you, you bring up love, right, earlier. Yeah. And the thing is, is that uh, in, in, in the native culture, they call telepathy amongst humans and all the animals and creatures and trees and plants and such the language of love. Because in the language of love, there can be no lies. Right. And a good gardener yeah. loves his plants and so will play music to yeah. them and have a great harvest. And all, all, of, all of the knowledge of the herbs had come to the people 
because the people were listening to the plants. Right, the like plants in Finhorn, would... Scotland. That's right. You know, they, it's a very harsh environment in northern Scotland on the seashore, and, but they have cabbages this size. Because why? Because they learn to speak or listen to the trees or the cabbages or the flowers. So what are you talking about? They listen to the flowers and trees. Yep, they have books on it and a whole school. It's called Finhorn. It's yeah. proven by yeah. good harvests that they've rendered by able to communicate with the earth and with the spirit of the plants. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, I need to go. All right. Well, thank you very Frank, much. It was a real pleasure to meet you. Likewise. And uh, come on, my show. Uh, some. We invite you to subscribe to our mailing list at TakeBackYourPower.net. We're bringing this conversation forward, but, uh, but I, I hope you uh, enjoy and are inspired by, but also really pissed off at what's actually going on here and get activated to to be part of the solution. So thank you, and we'll talk to you soon. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build out is going to be very infrastructure intensive. Cell phone.